Okay, so welcome. Um, so today we're going to be looking at applying for grants with the United Church of Canada Foundation. And I hope that means that lots of you are in the middle of uh, starting applications or putting together some projects or um, things like that for us to take a look at. So just to give you an idea of what we're going to be looking at um, today, we're I'll take you I'll give a little bit of a brief on the foundation, a little bit of who we are. Um, I think that that information sometimes gets lost, but is really helpful because while we are part of the, you know, partnered with the United Church of Canada, we are our own organization as well. And we do have some um, neat things that are going on with us uh, that we like to, to focus on. So I'll bring you through some of that and hopefully that'll help you all as you fill out your applications as well. And then I'll take you through our different grants and grant opportunities. So we have three primary grant opportunities, Seeds of Hope, Scholarship and Research Grants and then other grants. And then we'll touch base on how decisions are made and your responsibility as someone who is applying. So who is the United Church of Canada Foundation? So we got uh, our start about 20 years ago in 2002. Previous to that, the United Church of Canada had you know, different funds and endowments and things like that, and, and they did, made the decision to create a new organization, the foundation, to help manage all of that. Um, and we provide services to the United Church of Canada members, as well as all the other courts of the United Church as well. Currently, we're in the middle of our 2022 to 2025 strategic plan, and I really want you to pay attention to our purpose, which is to foster deep spirituality, bold discipleship, and daring justice by attracting and deploying financial resources. So sometimes uh, this idea of all of these investments can be a little bit um, intimidating or it's hard to always see and understand why uh, there's a whole organization managing these things, but it's really so that we can do our best to take these financial resources and deploy them in a way that allows us to um, support the United Church of Canada. So this idea of fostering bold, uh, deep spirituality, bold discipleship and daring justice those are really at our core as we work with you know, communities of faith within the United Church and other organizations uh, to grant out and as well as to work with them on other financial goals. So like I said, so we provide services to individuals. So that could be individuals looking to make donations, organizations, so that could be grant recipients, that could also be communities of faith or other organizations like camps looking to make some endowment funds and what I assume a lot of you guys are here today, the grant seekers. So people who are looking, people and organizations looking to get some extra funding or some new funding for uh, exciting programs and things like that. And that gets us into grants, which is what we're all here for. So we have, like I said, three main granting opportunities at the United Church of Canada Foundation. The first one of the primary granting program we offer is the Seas of Hope granting program. Um, and I'll probably spend most of our time here today looking at that just because it is our primary granting program. And I think that a lot of what I talk about with Seeds of Hope is also applicable to the other spaces. So this just gives us a place to work through some of those questions um, that you can then take and apply across the board. So there's the Seeds of Hope, which is really providing uh, funding for new and innovative programs that are coming out of places. So it's that, you know, that idea for the seed funding type of model. So it's not so much for things that you might typically include in your churches or community faith year over year budget, but more those new programs and places that you're, you're seeing a uh, need for in your communities. And then we have scholarship and research grants. So scholarships typically are uh, scholarship grants or bursaries that are for degree specific programs. Whereas research grants, we do offer a couple of larger research grants, which um, they don't have to be tied to a university or college institution. They can be done independently, those studies. And then that those research grants allow people to uh, spend their full time hours on that research um, while having some financial supports in place. And then we have some other grants. So those might have been set up by individual donors or organizations. Um, one of those that we are currently promoting is our um, Debt Relief for Thriving Congregations Fund, which was set up by some very generous donors to help congregations with large longstanding debts to help pay those down. So that's one of our other grants. So sometimes those can be one-offs like that. And some of them are maybe 
uh, ongoing grants, but maybe for a more narrow community. So let's take a look at Seeds of Hope. So for the Seeds of Hope grants, we have two rounds each year. We have one in the spring and one in the fall. We're currently in our spring uh, granting round. So I've been seeing some applications come in and I've been having lots of great conversations with um, people putting together applications. So typically those rounds open on January 15th and then applications are due April 15th. And then in the fall, typically applications open July 15th and then close October 15th. So that gives a couple of months for people to be able to get their thoughts together, put in an application, get some feedback on that and um, all of that as well. So what is the Seeds of Hope grant? That's, you know, a lot of people call and they just have a hope that uh, they'll be able to slot into Seeds of Hope. And luckily the Seeds of Hope granting program, one of the really neat things about it, it is a very broad program. So it allows the foundation to support a lot of diverse different types of um, ministers and programs that people approach us with. So to qualify for Seeds of Hope, there are a few you know, qualifiers. We unfortunately can't um, take on every project out there, but the first one is to benefit the United Church of Canada. So like I said earlier, the foundation's role and purpose really is to be a support and service to the United Church of Canada and all of its courts. So that's that's a, a big one right there. Um, that doesn't mean that if you're not part of the United Church of Canada, we won't be able to work with you because there are groups that have partnership agreements. And if you're coming to us and you happen to not be from a United Church, then you know connect with us and, and talk with us and we can see um, more clearly how we can work together. Um, we're looking for innovative ideas that encourage new expressions of ministry. So that's that's something that can be hard to put um, an exact name or number to. What is innovation? Innovation certainly looks different from group to group and from community to community. So what's innovative for me sitting here in the greater Toronto area might look very different from someone in Newfoundland or someone in Saskatchewan. So we do take that into consideration. So it's we, we unfortunately can't say this is the list of innovative, um, but we do say, come talk to us and talk to us about why your program or project is innovative. And that can help us better understand and better recommend to you how to fill out our applications. But what that doesn't mean is sometimes I, we will get requests for you know uh, those things that really are part of the church budget and it's for communities looking for help with church budget items. And that typically wouldn't uh, be included in what Seeds of Hope can cover. But like I say, always reach out, always talk to us because you never know and there's always uh, ways that we can uh, talk to better understand your story. We also look to see whether or not a program or project is going to have a continued impact after the grant is expended. So typically Seeds of Hope grants kind of cover a 12 month period, you know, where we have two rounds every year. So, you know, they're not looking at long term grants that are year over year over year. While it's possible funding might be provided for um, multiple years, typically grants are going to be closed off and short term. So if we're going to be providing uh, monies to a project that uh, that helped to seed that project, we also want to know, well, what are your plans for how to fund this program once Seeds of Hope is no longer able to support you um, and down the line, you know, in another year or two years. So that's one of the questions we ask in our application. And that really helps to give us a sense that this is something that's being thought through and considered and that this is something that the community, your community at large is really wanting to invest in. And that brings us to our final point is that we really want to strengthen the capacity of organizations that further the work of our church. So that's where, you know, we have a lot of great innovative thinkers out there. We have a lot of people with fantastic ideas, but we want to make sure that we are working to really strengthen the capacity of our organizations. We want to make sure that we're working together. That's why we always do ask for um, your community of faith or regional or uh, whatever space that is, leadership to be part of the conversations as well. Uh, so that we are working together and that this is something that is can be of benefit not just to one person or one small group, but really broader as well. So when you're filling out your applications, sometimes it can be hard to figure out, well, what are you looking for? What's an organization looking for? 
Uh, I talked a little bit about the foundation's strategic plan. And part of that strategic plan is that we've identified four core priorities for the foundation. So this doesn't mean that every project that comes to us has to have one of these priorities at the center, but it is something that we look at and consider when we're listening to the stories of these projects, when we're reading through applications to see how aligned are we in our thinking process? How um, are we gonna be moving together? And that does go back to talk about strengthening the church as a whole and not just individual organizations. So our four main priorities are anti-racism, climate justice, communities of faith and reconciliation with indigenous peoples. So one way that I talk to people about thinking through these priorities is perhaps to consider how one or all of these priorities might already be something your project is focusing on. For example, when uh, if you are looking to start or develop a community food bank, think about the demographics that might be of the people that might be benefiting most from these projects a lot of times we'll see that those demographics are filled with people from racialized communities and people of color. So we're already looking at how anti-racism is something that is part of that conversation in trying to build equity and find um, spaces to support communities and demographics that don't typically have those supports or might have systemic um, barriers there. Another way is climate justice. So we do provide funding and support through Seeds of Hope for events. So perhaps you can think about how can your event be done in a way that is environmentally conscious and include part of that story in your application. So it doesn't have to be all of these pieces. It doesn't have to be, um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be at the center, but take a moment to consider how might you include one or all of these priorities in your projects as well as how they might already be present there. And I find that that helps when we're looking through the applications to say, yes, we are on the same page. We are moving forward together. This, this is a good fit for the foundation. This is a good fit for Seeds of Hope. So to the dollars and cents, the actual application. So um, first off, I encourage everyone to take a look at the website. The website is, offers lots of details as well. Um, and the website is also where you're going to get access to our application through our online portal. So we use a portal system for a couple of reasons. One really big benefit of the portal system is that myself and the rest of the foundation staff, we have access to the portal. So as you're filling out your application, we can see the live updates, which is really helpful because when I get phone calls from people in the middle of their applications, that means that I can jump online, I can pull up their application right away and work through their questions while seeing exactly what they're um, going through. Some things to remember as well um, in terms of the dollars and cents piece is that the Seeds of Hope granting program is a matching program. So I get asked a lot, what's the maximum amount I can apply for? And that answer is kind of iffy because we don't really have a strict dollar amount. Instead, we say, the maximum amount that the Seeds of Hope granting program can uh, grant out is 50% of the budgeted expenses. And when I say that, sometimes people go, oh no, where are we gonna find all of that? So then we say, you know, part of the application is also looking at uh, who else you are looking out to, to support the project. Where else are you finding community support and funding? Because one of the reasons why we want the Seeds of Hope uh, granting program to be a matching program is to show that there is community support for the program as well outside of the United Church of Canada Foundation. So having more than one funder, having more than one place where you're getting those funds helps us to know that there is that community of support. And you can think about that in creative ways as well. So I often talk to people about making sure to include sort of hidden costs. So a lot of times people will be uh, coming from their communities of faith and their communities of faith will say, hey, we've got this building, so we can provide the space for you, but you know, we just don't have it in our budget to do the, the rest of it. Well, that space is an expense in and of itself. We just oftentimes don't uh, include all of those expenses of what it costs to run the space that you're using into budgets. And I, that's one way that we can see from um, the foundation that you have that uh, financial buy-in from your community of faith as well. So, you know, always talk to us uh, to figure out what we mean by these different questions and to get a better sense of um, uh, how, how you can fill these pieces out. 
The other thing I ask people to do is to make sure to tell us your story. So a lot of the questions in our um, application are geared toward helping applicants tell us not only what they're looking for money to purchase or fund, but also why. We wanna know why is this particularly important to you and your community? And that's where that idea of innovation comes in as well. Um, it's hard to know whether or not something is innovative without knowing that context, without knowing the greater story of the community that's um, birthing and bringing out this project. So we want that narrative, that relationship. We're not just looking to say, okay, well, they're looking for X number of dollars to purchase X item. We really want to know the importance behind that because that gives us a greater sense of how we are enriching uh, the church as a whole as well. And the last thing I... I've said it before and I'll say it again, talk to us. Uh, you know, I'm as the foundation coordinator right now, I'm the primary person that you'll be talking to for Seeds of Hope applications and for other granting programs. Uh, you'll see my contact information at the end of this presentation, but you can also, you know, direct uh, an email to our general emails or make a phone call through our general line and, you know, talk to us. We want to be able to just arrange a time to speak with you to get a better sense of what's going on. And that helps us not only advise you on how to fill out the application, but also when we're talking to the Joint Grants Committee, uh, which I'll touch base on soon, we get to, while we don't make the decisions, I don't make the decisions of who is awarded a grant, I do get to help provide more context for the Joint Grants Committee as they make those decisions. So having those conversations um, help, is really helpful uh, as those decisions get made. So that's the, the general uh, process for the uh, Seeds of Hope granting program. I'm seeing some questions come in and we'll get to those uh, at the end. And But right now I wanna to touch base also on those scholarship and research grants as well as the general granting opportunities. So like I uh, mentioned, the scholarships that we offer um, those scholarships tend to be more for degree programs, so less your MDiv or, you know, bachelor programs, but more specific uh, theological programs um, and things like that. They, they can be a little bit more uh, narrow in their focus than Seeds of Hope is. So that's where I always say go to our website, take a look at what is available, and reach out to me to find out about more of the individual details. Each of the scholarships has slightly different um, requirements and slight, some of them um, have the same kind of period for when we accept applications, but some of them are a little bit different. So because they are so individual, that's where I say really come and talk to us if you have questions and if you're hoping to apply to one of those so that we can uh, give you more context for what's going on with those. And then for the research grants, so that would be like the Megechi grant. Uh, those are grants that we have the benefit of being able to provide to usually um, more seasoned uh, reverends and uh, people within our United Church community who are going to be endeavoring in larger research projects. And, you know, we know that these large research projects take a lot of time and dedication. So by providing grant monies um, to these uh, people doing this type of research, it lets them spend more of their time working on the research rather than having to do more of their uh, maybe day jobs to be able to pay the bills. So we want to be able to support people in, in, in creative ways to be able to make sure that we get this great research that's come out and uh, ends up being a benefit to not just the individual, but really the United Church as a whole. But yes, as always, talk to us. That is the biggest uh, thing I want you all to take away from today's uh, session here. And then we have other grants. So again, we have a because the foundation works with individuals and organizations um, in different ways, there are some grants that have been set up by individuals as well as grants that have been set up by specific organizations. Um, that we help to administrate. And some, sometimes our joint grants committee is the group that does make those decisions. Um, and sometimes we uh, help in other varying ways. So I say, go and take a look at our website to find out more about those other grants, find out, you know, particularly, like I said at the top, I want people to know about the um, Debt Relief for Thriving Congregations grant that we're currently promoting and things like that. And again, because these are more narrow focused grants, the terms of the grants are often a little bit different. 
um, and specific. So I don't want to get into each of each individual one here, but take a look, see what's there. If you're confused or need help, connect with us, give us a call and we can help work through all those pieces. You know what, I'm gonna go just one more note on scholarship and research grants. So right now we are accepting applications for the vast majority of our scholarship and research grants. And in terms of the term, so what time during the year, the majority of them open, they tend to be in line with the spring round of Seeds of Hope. Um, so they open January 15th, but they close on March 15th. So it is a little bit of a narrower um, period of time to apply to those. Finally, decision. So one of the most popular questions I get when I talk to people about grants is, when will I find out if we've been approved for a grant? A lot of us are working with deadlines. A lot of us are trying to get programs up and running by certain points. So the when is really important and the how is also important. So we have, you've heard me reference it throughout um, uh, this time together, the Joint, Joint Grants Committee, which is a volunteer committee that takes much more time, uh, just an incredible amount of time and service to read through all of the applications, meet together and make those decisions. So it's really a big job. In the fall granting round, we had 63 applications. Um, so it, they spend a lot of time really considering uh, the applications, making sure that the applications, not just for Seeds of Hope, but excuse me, the rest of the granting um, spaces that, the applications and those people who are approved for uh, who get approved applications, that those projects are in line with the terms of the grant. So that's the that's a really important thing. So uh, we want to make sure that we are being faithful as the foundation in dispersing the monies that we have for these grants in a way that is in line with the way that those funds were set up. So that's the job of the joint grants committee to really take a look and make sure that those pieces are in order. In terms of timing, if the uh, grant deadline is April 15th, we try and get, you know, it takes a little bit of time to gather all that information and send it out to joint grants, but typically we'll have decisions by the end of May and we try and get all the monies and checks and funds out the door by early June at the latest. If we can, end of May is always preferable. And then for the fall grant that would fall granting around that would be end of November, early December. So we do our best to get these things out uh, quite quickly after applications are due, because we know that uh, organizations are really relying on knowing the results of these grants um, applications so that they can figure out the next steps in their projects and programs. So we already covered that about when the decisions are made. And finally, what is your responsibility as an applicant? So the primary responsibility is to fill out your application and submit your proposal. While we don't require grant applicants to connect with the foundation, I know some of the United Church grants uh, do have that as a requirement is to have a consultation. We don't require that, but we really, really do encourage that. Like I said earlier, that really helps us to give you guidance on how best to fill out the application and things you might think about to include to help uh, give your project the best chance possible at being approved for a grant from the Joint Grants Committee. After submitting the proposal or application, your next responsibility, if you are awarded a grant, is to make sure that the grant monies awarded are put to use as you've indicated in your application or proposal. So sometimes we do have people who get a grant and we send it out and then something happens and they have to shift their plans. We know that happens, uh, you know, and we, we, we do our best to work with those groups, but we always just say, you know, contact us if there are ever any changes or if situations arise that are unexpected so that we can work with you to figure out the best uh, route forward. But it's really important that the monies that you get do go towards what was indicated because again, that is in line with our stewardship of the funds that have been entrusted to us at the foundation as well. Also your responsibility is to let people know where your funding came from. So we really encourage people to let, uh, to advertise that they receive funding from the foundation, whether or not that's through Seeds of Hope or otherwise. And that's not because we want the, um, 
we want the credit of saying, oh, look, we gave you some money. It's because by letting people know that you receive funding from the foundation, it lets people know that we are a funding source for their pro programs and projects. Also for our funds that have been um, donated or invested uh, from other individuals and organizations, while those people might not always be named, they really love and enjoy seeing what the fruits of their investments have borne. So being able to show the generous donors how their funds are being used is also really important. And that falls into the last responsibility, which is reporting back. So once you've received your grant monies and you've done your project and your program, we do require people to provide a grant report back to us. And we use those grant reports to you know, tell stories, whether or not that's through our social media or through our newsletters. Um, we like to use the grant stories of people who we've uh, worked with through our granting programs um, so that people can learn about the foundation as a source of funding and so that people can know that there are ways and places to uh, get funding for some of these uh, projects that they have. So, you know, talking about the foundation and talking about uh, our granting programs is a really important part in helping us um, work through our strategic plan. And finally, questions. So we want to make sure that we get to questions. So I will start taking a look at what's been sent in. And I also want to make sure that you take down my email address. So this is, it's on the screen right now, jyleonard at united-church.ca. Please, please, if we don't cover something here today that you wanted to get covered, send me a message and we can set up a time to talk. Um, if you have more specific questions that I am not answering, send me an email, set up a time to talk. Uh, again and again, the best advice I can give anyone is to connect with us because a lot of the conversations that we uh, have really do help us to form that better sense of the story that you're trying to tell and the story you're trying to achieve for your own communities um, through applying for grants and through developing programs. Okay, so I'm just going to close off my screen share now and let's see which questions we have come in here. Okay, so I have a question about technology grants. So typically the United Church of Canada Foundation's uh, granting programs, you know, that it, it's, it's kind of an in-between. I get this question a lot. A lot of organizations, especially in this COVID, post-COVID uh, space, we are realizing more than ever how valuable technology is and how integral it is in helping our communities of faith uh, continue and to let people know what's going on. And as a really valuable source of uh, focus for our ministries to come out of. So what I say is Seeds of Hope might be an opportunity for that depending on the greater uh, projects and programs around there. In terms of specific technology grants, capital expenses like uh, purchase of technology isn't typically prioritized by the foundation, but like I say, contact us and talk to us. The foundation doesn't have technology specific grants. Um, I know that the United Church does have a couple of grants or loan, uh, not, I think they also might be loan programs as well. Um, but again, I, I, I am not the expert in all of them, but if you have a question, feel free to reach out and I will, I can take some time to look through my list and try and point you in the right direction. Okay, that's a great question. How many of the 63 applications from the fall were approved? So I, I should know this off the top of my head. I think something like 43 or 47 of the 63 applications were approved. Not all of them were approved to 100%. Um, after each granting round, we do post on uh, the Seeds of Hope webpage um, a document that shows all the programs that were approved, as well as how much each program was approved for and where they received that funding from. So that's another place that I like to encourage people to look to find out recently what has the foundation been funding. And that can also give you an idea of hey, I have a project like this. I wonder if other groups have been getting funding for this because that might give you a good um, indication of uh, whether or not this is a place you want to explore more as well. So what's the total of value that was distributed in the fall? Um, I'm seeing here a note that says that uh, I think someone linked through to the our fall results. Um, 
I think we granted out over $300,000 in the fall round. In the spring round, I think we granted almost $300,000. It changes um, from season to season and year over year how much funding is available for Seeds of Hope as well as uh, how many applications we receive. So those numbers do fluctuate a little bit, but our our goal is to be able to um, help as many projects as, as we can. So I have a question here. It says, as it relates to matching funds, if we have applied for a Canada Summer Student Program to help fund having a student to help us with our project, and this is worth X amount of dollars, but we don't find it till late April, if we get this grant, how do you work the matching funds? So within, if you, so this can be summer student program or it could be other granting programs that maybe you've applied for and you're just not sure. You know, apply to us based on the assumption on your best assumption. So if you've applied and you think you're going to get this grant, include that, but you know, include a note in your application that lets us know that the grant is in process. Um, that's helpful for us to know. You know, we and and we'll we'll work with you and we will be communicative. If the joint grants committee says, you know, we really need that funding to be in place to be able to provide um, for this certain project, we, that might be a conversation that happens. Um, and it, it it can be situation specific too, right? So just depending on what's going on. So I always just say, let us know. Include that as a funding source in your application where you where there is the revenues part. Um, but don't worry too much. Just make a note of it. Is there a format for grant reporting? So yes. Yeah, so whenever we send out, uh, as soon as we have the uh, approval for all of the grants that have been recommended, we send out emails to all of the grant applicants to let them know that they've been approved and that supporting documentation will be on its way. Um, and part of that initial email is our uh, reporting guidelines as well as our uh, photo release so that if there are photos that we can use in, for example, social posts or things like that, we have all that on board. And like I say, always come and talk to us. We do have, you know, generally reports come in the form of, you know, just a Word document or whatever. But if you're having trouble reporting th that way, uh, we're willing to work with groups as they are. So if you know, you're you're finding it hard to get that together. It's possible that we could uh, get creative and find some time to maybe record a conversation between the two of us, or you know, have a phone call and um, with the foundation and figure out other ways to report back. So we do want to be mindful that not everyone has the same access uh, to technology or abilities to or time as well. So so come talk to us. But in general, we do have a set. Uh, reporting guidelines that we ask people to fill in and fit in with. If you don't get funds from the spring cycle, can you reapply in the fall cycle? Absolutely. So one of the things that sometimes does happen is that a project will apply for funding and there's interest from joint grants, but maybe there's some information that seems missing or maybe you know we think that, oh, this could really uh, benefit from another funding source or something like that, then when we send out our uh, letter to inform the applicant that they have not received funding, we will say, apply again. Here are some recommendations from the Joint Grants Committee to help point, point applicants in the right direction of kind of why they weren't approved and uh, where we, we think they could strengthen their, their applications as well. I'm assuming, so someone says, had a question, Christine Marie, uh, I see again the four fields for which the foundation will see requests for grants. I think you might be talking about our four priority areas. So again, the, the our priority areas aren't the only areas that we receive grants for, but those are where the foundation is looking to put out, uh, put a priority emphasis on. So, you know, even if your grant doesn't fit any of those priority areas, I just encourage people to look at those priority areas and uh, consider how that might be part of the application as well. Again, if that's unclear, please come talk to me, send me a message. So someone says, I'm assuming that grants for capital expenses, example, solar panel installation would not funnel under Seeds of Hope. That is, should be more of a program. So typically capital grant expenses, and I, I mentioned this a couple questions ago as well, aren't prioritized by the 
Seeds of Hope granting program. That being said, there are times when capital expenses are approved. So it just, it really depends. And that's where I really encourage people to tell the story. So sometimes there's a, you need to purchase an item that would be a capital expense, but the reason behind purchasing that item or the reason behind uh, needing those capital expenditures is really because that's what's required to move forward with um, meeting certain needs of your community or things like that. So it's it's one of those things where it's not a blanket no, never will capital expenses be covered by Seeds of Hope or approved by Seeds of Hope, but it, it usually has a matter to do with more of the story behind what's going on in your community. So that's where, you know, come talk to us, help explain to us what's going on so that we can then help to um, frame with you how uh, it might be more, uh, you might have a more successful application. So someone has asked, will you fund wages for a startup that has a plan for long-term sustainability? So yeah, we will. So depending, you know, funding wages is one of those things that is kind of like capital expenditures. Sometimes you see these, uh, someone will all get requests for, oh, we're really wanting to uh, have this position within our community of faith because we think that this could really help with X, Y, and Z. And sometimes it's my first reaction is, well, that kind of seems like a budget expense. I don't know if that's really appropriate for Seeds of Hope. But then when you talk and you explain and you have those conversations and when you, the story is broadened, we can see those things as being more um, program specific for something that really is an innovative uh, space and need within a community. So when it comes to funding wages, yeah, come talk to us. But I really like that um, note that Nancy included. Uh, a startup that has a plan for long-term sustainability. So that's usually a question that really does uh, get brought up as well when it comes to uh, finding grant funds to cover wages is after that first year, how is this role going to be funded? Because if you can only have this role for 12 months, then how useful can that really be? So we want to see what the long-term plan is. Is the long-term plan to you know get people used to this so that people want to give more to this? Is the plan to find funding from other sources. So there are different ways that that can happen, but that is a really important part, um, especially when we're looking at wage funding. So Hebert says, what kind of expenses can and cannot be included in the grant proposal? So again, because Seeds of Hope is such a broad granting program, and I apologize, I'm focusing on Seeds of Hope if you're hoping to talk to about a specific other grant. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, but within Seeds of Hope, there's not a blanket list of yes and no. It really is about how everything is going to be working together um, and how your individual expenses um, are working to uh, fill the purpose of your proposal and grant application. So again, it's the storytelling. It's, it's you know, sometimes things aren't very glamorous. So sometimes you need to put in things like stationery or whatever it's going to be or supplies, miscellaneous supplies. And we understand that those things are sometimes part of an integral to a program rending well, um, and that's part of the expenses. But it's so it's not really a yes category and a no category. It's more tell us your story and we'll figure out uh, together what works best for um, the, the budget. Could you please clarify the implications of the recent announcement by the GCO to pause the funding of grants through embracing the spirit and applications to Seeds of Hope? So yeah, so the EDGE grants, the Embracing the Spirit, which uh, are the Embracing the Spirit grants and growth grants and things like that. Um, so those have been paused as the GCO is working with the EDGE team to relook at those grants and relook at how those funds might um, better support their uh, strategic plans and um, priorities. But that doesn't really, the, the way that that affects Seeds of Hope primarily is that a lot of requests that we would have also said, hey, look at EDGE as another funding source for this program. That's not available right now. So I think that that's the main way that it's uh, really affecting Seeds of Hope. And also that people who might have gone to, to, to EDGE for um, an Embracing the Spear grant, because that's not an option, those people are also coming to Seeds of Hope. So you know, it's it's pretty early to know how many applications we're going to get for the spring round, but my my inclination is that we're probably going to have a few extra applications this round because edge grants are paused at the moment. Um, you know, those conversations are still being had and think they're still being worked through. Uh, so I don't have uh, details on many more details on embracing the spirit, but it's a great question. And again, it's just 
you know, we're, we're in this uh, ride too and trying to figure out uh, how to best move forward and how to best uh, support communities of faith that are looking for uh, this kind of funding for, for new projects and programs. Um, do you have any suggestions for long-term funding, especially for a small congregation working with people on low incomes? So I think my best suggestion for that is really to have a lot of conversations. So again, we're, we're coming from so many diverse backgrounds, um, whether or not you're from a rural area, whether or not where in the country you're situated, uh, you know, do you have an aging population? Do you have a younger population? There are, there are so many things that go into where your funding sources are and who you can reach out to. I'm certainly not an expert in where you can reach out, where everyone can reach out to. So my, my best uh, conversation point or my best advice for that is to reach out to like organizations around you, find out what they've been doing. If they've like to other communities of faith, United Church or not, um, reach out to other like-minded organizations, look at annual reports from like-minded organizations because sometimes they'll have information on where they reached out to for support and talk to your regional leadership as well. So, you know, they might know of other communities in your area that are looking to do similar things. Maybe it's something that you can partner together with another community of faith with, um, rather than both communities doing things on their own. Um, and sometimes there are smaller grants available or other grants available that are region specific that I uh, at the foundation won't know about. Um, so my best uh, advice is always to reach out to the other supports and the other leadership in your area and region uh, from the United Church, as well as just in your community, you know, reach out those feelers, let people know you're looking for um, help because I, I find um, that other organizations often do have a wealth of knowledge of that you might not know of or have little ins and outs of uh, places that you might find additional funding as well. I'm sorry if that isn't a, a super specific answer, but uh, again, I, I'm not the expert on uh, funding sources for all spaces, but always feel free to reach out to the foundation as well. Uh, while we're not gonna be the experts on all of the United Church grants, we do have a little bit more access or maybe information on some of their grants as well. So I might not be able to give you a lot of details, but even pointing you in a direction of someone else you can talk to from the general counsel office as well, that could, that could be an option. I think my main advice for a lot of these questions is, is talk to us. So talk to me or talk to uh, leadership around you as well. Would all grants for children and youth programs be under other grants? So no. So there are some. Uh, so the so the, you can absolutely apply for youth and ch uh, ch uh, grants for children and youth centric programs through Seeds of Hope. We do have a couple of funds that help to uh, seed the Seeds of Hope granting program that are specific for children and youth. So absolutely, come to Seeds of Hope for children and youth programs. That's a great place to start. Um, and uh, again, connect with us so that we can help work, move forward in figuring out the, the best way to maybe frame some of those applications. Because I've had a couple of conversations with people looking to develop uh, programs for children or, or youth or young adults. And it's one of those difficult things where sometimes I think that those are the programs that can sound like, oh, maybe that should just be budgeted. Maybe that's typically in line with uh, what, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago obviously you have a youth pastor at a church, but times are different now. Uh, we're obviously in a very different context and the way that those uh, ministries and um, programs work now is really different. So yeah, no, absolutely. There's lots, there is funding for child and uh, youth specific programs and we are happy to talk with you to help uh, build a uh, application that will be hopefully uh, successful. Um, from Bob, where are some, what are some examples of programs supported by the foundation with its Thriving Congregations grant? So the Thriving Congregations grant is, um, it's a one-time grant. It's, we haven't granted out yet because we are still accepting applications, but to give some more context around that one, we have uh, some generous donors who have been part of the United Church in a couple of different communities of faith for, um, many, many years, and they know firsthand what it's like 
to be part of a community of faith that is thriving in many ways, but just has this burden of debt just that looms over them. So, you know, you can do your best, but you always have this giant debt. So they set aside um, $100,000 to provide funding for this uh, debt relief for thriving congregations grant. So the well, you can this grant if you go to our website it's on the other grants uh, web page and there is an individual application for that we're accepting applications for that grant until uh, April 15th also um, and really the qualifications are that for that are large grants so the benchmark for that is about hundred thousand dollars and long-standing grants so about 10 years 10 years old so I I've had a couple people ask me questions about oh well what if it's like a nine-year-old grant or nine-year-old debt my my advice is to send in an application, um, let us know what's going on because, you know, the, the goal of this grant is to help keep congregations and communities of faith that are struggling with this long-term debt. So my uh, sense, although it will be up to the Joint Grants Committee to ultimately discern and decide um, whether or not people who are just shy of some of those uh, benchmarks uh, are able to receive granting money from the um, debt relief fund. Uh, but, you know, send, send in your applications. One other question I get from the Thriving Congregations uh, Granting Fund is uh, in the application, it says, please provide audited statements. I think we are all aware that some of our smaller congregations don't get audited statements. So you might have, there are, um, oh, I can't think about what they're called right now, but compilation statements, I think is what they were called. I think uh, last year, the name of them just changed, but you might have a compilation statement or something else that's not a full audit, but is our statements that have been externally prepared. Um, send us what you have. Uh, we know that you know investing in an audit is a very uh, uh, resource heavy endeavor for smaller congregations. So send us what you have. Um, we have that understanding. The idea is to get us the uh, the best financial statements that you can get us just so that we can make sure that we are doing our due diligence at the foundation in saying that we are confident and comfortable in um, that the people that or the organizations communities of faith were granting monies out to do fill the requirements and the uh, terms of the grant as it was set up. Okay, so we have a few minutes left. Um, I don't, I think I've made it through all of the questions that have come in so far. Does anyone else have any questions or any comments they'd like to make? Or, um, you know, if, if there's uh, any other talking points? Oh, you're very welcome. I'm glad that, I hope that this has been helpful to a lot of you. I know sometimes it can be hard to know, do people want to hear more about the details of the process and how everything gets worked out or more of the nuances? Um, and I think with a, a group of this size, I, I hope that I've hit on um, a broad set of what people are looking for. And I, I've, I've said it a dozen times already, but please really do feel free to send me emails. If my email inbox is full, I'll, I'll do my best to make through that in, uh, <laughs> at least let you know that I'm uh, you're on my list. But yeah, so again, just a few uh, pieces to remember. We are currently accepting applications for the Seeds of Hope granting program until I believe it's midnight on the 15th of April. Um, also for the scholarships and uh, research grants, we are currently accepting applications for those until March 15th. If you ever have any questions, send us a message. Um, and then, yeah, and even if you aren't ready for a Seeds of Hope uh, grant for the, the spring round. If you're thinking, oh, we have this program and I'm not sure, we're, we might not be able to make the deadline, still feel free to reach out or take a look at the application online. The application, it might change a little bit from grant cycle to grant cycle, just with small updates, but in general, it stays the same. So at least you can get an idea of what you're looking at um, or what types of questions are gonna be asked. If you're having trouble with the portal, let me know. Um, in general, it works really well, but occasionally there have been some, you know, little, uh, glitches and errors in that, and we do our best to figure those things out. Yes, yeah, so someone is asking about receiving a copy of the recording of today, and we'll, we will absolutely send out uh, a link to this. Um, 
I have a, another question. Can a congregation submit more than one grant in a funding cycle? Yes. So you can absolutely, you can submit as many grant applications you want for as many programs as you have. And we look at those on an you know, individual uh, thing. So obviously we're gonna know that you've submitted several other applications, but yeah. And sometimes applications come from different spaces in the same congregation. So they're, and they fill different needs. So don't feel like you have to fit everything into to one. We absolutely can uh, accept multiple applications from the same uh, community of faith or um, congregation for the same granting cycle. I have another new question here. If the organization receives funds from the foundation, does this mean the other grants such as justice and reconciliation grants would not be possible? So no. So uh, the justice and reconciliation grants, those are not, um, those are looked at by uh, Indigenous Justice Ministries. Um, and so they might, sometimes there's communication between some of the different communities and groups about, oh, have you heard from this community or this congregation? And when uh, for the Embrace the Spirit grants, uh, joint grants would often sometimes look at some of those grants and there is conversation and uh, that sometimes does happen, but that's less to say, oh, this group will fund it and this group won't, and more to just get a better sense of who people are reaching out to. So, and that, you know, normally when we do have Embracing the Spirit and other EDGE grants up and running, uh, we would certainly send you over to them to talk to them about uh, being one of those matching grant providers. So uh, just because you're receiving uh, funds from one space in the United Church doesn't mean you can't come over to the foundation or um, apply to another space in the foundation. Yeah, someone uh, just sent in the chat uh, regarding the question about technology grant that their pastoral charge received a grant from the region. So yeah, again, in terms of looking for other spaces um, to get grants, please, uh, I really do encourage you to talk to your regional leadership and to the other, um, maybe more localized leadership uh, in your area. And you just, you never know uh, what might be available to maybe your smaller group or uh, maybe something that is a broader program, but maybe uh, you just don't know about and your your uh, regional leadership would be a great place to start to uh, look at that and get a better sense of some of the different places and spaces that uh, might be available there. I just want to give a big thank you to all of you guys for uh, sticking it out today and for joining us here today, providing me with all these great questions. Um, for wanting to learn more about the foundation, please, please let people know about uh, the foundation that might not. Um, if you have questions about other parts of the foundation or other programs the foundation offer, again, reach out to us. We are excited to be able to provide support to um, the United Church and all of its members and uh, courts in, any of the, in the best ways that we can. Um, so it's been great to be here. And